And action! Murdoch Mysteries The Curse of Lost Sparrows is a 13-part original online series we've created to support the fourth season of the show. On air, we've actually put a storyline into the fourth season where uh, Constable George Crabtree has decided to write his first adventure novel. Each week, immediately following the episode, you get to go online and watch the next chapter of his novel come to life. Curse of the Lost Pharaohs is the online component for the Murdoch Mysteries. It's a hybrid live action uh, animated series of short webisodes. It's, it's sort of a heightened fantastical take on this series. It, it's almost like um, a bit of Guy Ritchie thrown in there with a smear of Scooby-Doo. And the idea is that it's, it's, um, you're seeing the novel that Constable Crabtree has written. So it's all coming from uh, his sort of skewed, heightened, fantastical perspective on uh, police work in Toronto. We didn't want to replicate the show. We just didn't want to make another little mystery for, for people to see. So we wanted it to be different. And, and then we thought to ourselves, well, how can we do that? You know, and then the idea of having it be told from George's point of view, um, it all opened up a world of possibilities. And so the characters are more representative of how he would dream them to be. You know, he, he sees himself as, you know, more of an equal to Murdoch, you know, solving crimes alongside his mentor. He's still the right-hand man, but he's no longer a, a simple deputy. You know, Will, of late, I believed our fair city might see some reprieve from murder. Fate cares little about our beliefs, George. seven murders to solve. Murdoch is probably the closest to his series personality, but everything about him is just kind of enhanced. He thinks faster, he acts faster, he can take a bottle of whiskey and a broken shotgun and make a flamethrower in two minutes. But he's still their fearless leader and he's the one who's really doing a lot of the deduction as they try and get to the bottom of the crime. <laughs> Do you recognize him, George? Alderman Aiken. Yes, and these others were all found dead in the exact same place. And no sign of foul play, hmm? None, but seven prominent citizens dying of natural causes all on the same night, it's too far beyond credulity. The poisoner, perhaps? Well, I really feel like sort of the heart of Crabtree is still there. It's still sort of his own view of himself. So in a way, he gets to be more dashing and uh, a little brainier and a little brawnier as well. But then it's all a little tongue in cheek as well. I mean, it's sort of, it's, the whole thing is a, bit, is a little bit cheeky as well. And uh, I think that fans will, will enjoy seeing that. And it's, it's, it's I mean, obviously it's, it's very heightened and a little bit comical even at times. Where in the blazes is Julia? Pardon my tardiness. Julie Ogden is still the Station 4 coroner, but she's also a wealthy adventurous. Right, gentlemen! Bracken Reed, we've, uh, you know, taken George's notion that he's a gruff kind of boss figure to, you know, a level of being a two-fisted brawler who's as loyal as they come, but a stout-hearted uh, man of action. And so we've basically just taken all the, the character traits that exist with the characters and just amped them that little bit. And it makes them quite different and quite fun and are a little bigger than life. You know, I think in a funny way, they're very, well, being very true to themselves at the same time. The biggest challenge in developing the online series is that uh, Murdoch Mysteries, the broadcast series, is an established brand with very high production values. It's a great looking show and we wanted to give the audience online similar production values to what they find in, on the series. And unfortunately digital budgets are not quite at the level of broadcast budgets. No. So we wanted to stretch those dollars as far as possible to make sure that we gave the audience something that 
uh, they wouldn't feel was a step down from what they get on, on the broadcast series. The main reason we decided to go with illustrations is because once we brought Cal Coons into the picture, um, he decided to take this story and make it a lot more fantastical. And on the um, budgets that we had to work with, it wasn't going to be possible to execute all the things you're, you're going to see in Curse of the Lost Barrows uh, by shooting it, by doing everything as a shot. So uh, we decided to do a blend of live action and animation. The animation was our Hollywood budget. Uh, so what an animation allowed us to do is we could do these giant scenes. We could do a ship battle at sea. We could do a hot air balloon flying over Niagara Falls, um, which we never in a million years could afford to do. Uh, but then our live action allowed us to do all the conversations, and that's where we actually shot on the existing set. So uh, the hybrid, I think, is not only uh, something really cool to look at and watch, there were actually practical, practical reasons that helped us tell the story, because otherwise it would have been impossible. Thankfully, uh, right out of the gate, our, our illustrator really uh, knocked it out of the park with his illustrations. So, uh, of course, we wanted to get buy-in from all the series actors on uh, what they thought of the illustrations. And it was a very smooth process because we think um, our illustrator really achieved you know, a, gr a great look for the, for the animated portion of the shoot. Actually, all the actors were, were quite cool about uh, what we did, although uh, Thomas Craig, um, Knowing that we were doing illustrations, uh, every day on set, uh, he took every opportunity to say, if you were going to show me without my shirt on, make sure I have uh, uh, huge pipes. So in episode two, we do a fight scene with Thomas uh, where he's shirtless, and Thomas, uh, I hope you've done the, the pipes justice. <laughs> the Curse of the Lost Ferris, the, the scene where, where uh, Bracken Reed is, is fighting, and there's a lot of motion in that so uh, the moment you think fight scene you're thinking that and w the problem that we have is we're dealing with still images so we have to use a lot of camera tricks and fast movements and quick zooms and the way we accomplish this is by drawing each element in a different layer we're able to move that element from either from left to right and have the camera crash in and it's it's kind of um, a difficult process because a typical illustration you would draw it on one piece of paper, you know, but with this one, ha putting everything on a different layer will, will allow the animators to, to grab those specific elements and move them around. What we first actually drew was this little piece right here. And from there, we expanded on, on how the camera was gonna move. So we actually worked our way backwards. So we decided that the camera would sort of start in the rooftops over there and sort of pan down towards uh, Bracken Reed as he's punching the guy, and then we, we punch in really quick, and then we show him getting hit. And then over here, we get the final reveal of the whole scene, and then we have the guy that he's fighting sort of flailing about and falling flat on the ground. From this stage, what I would do is I, I would take uh, each of the layers and start illustrating them. So this is the foreground element. By putting in a different layer, it, it gives the animator a chance to sort of put these guys in motion and as well. We can also use these barrels to sort of move like that, to sort of reveal the scene, to give you the illusion that the camera is moving in. So we have the crowd here in a separate layer. Um, because there's there's a lot of them, we, we have to do it in a, in a separate layer so that way Bracken Reed can be animated in the foreground and sort of move around right in front of them. It just really creates a different kind of depth and, and three dimension sort of feel in this flat world. Again, with all these separate layers, we have to do it for each and every single one to create this animation and layered look. And again, because it's a flat image, by putting each thing in a different layer, we're able to, to create this, this sense of three-dimensional world that, that our, I guess our viewers are sort of going to get into and hopefully be immersed in and get really sucked into the experience. Fans should be watching Curse of the Lost Pharaohs because it is a reimagination of many of the series characters they already love. Um, and it's going to be something quite fresh. I think it's, uh, it's a really cool rip-roaring adventure that uh, is like nothing you have ever seen if you were a fan of the series. And uh, if you don't know what the series is, uh, check this out because it's, uh, it's sort of like a little taster menu of um, the characters, the adventures, and, and really what a great world uh, Shaftesbury and Maureen Jennings have created that, that is Murdoch Mysteries.